first if you take the grip with my forearm. I have a very strange grip. Uh, I use a western grip. Usually when you play your forehand, a lot of people, they have a continental grip. But I take my hand all the way over to the right side. Because that way I can get a lot of topspin with my forearm. And uh, I remember in the beginning that a lot of people that said to me that I have to change this stroke. Because this was not good for me to play. But I didn't listen, so I still continue to play the way it felt good for me. So I had a very strange grip, a western grip, and a forearm, I start with the forearm, I put my left foot in front of my right, and usually you take your racket straight back with the forearm, with the swing, straight back, but I didn't do that either. When I hit my forearm, I had kind of loop on my forearm, I started low, I got high up, finish down, hit my stroke, and then finish up again. That's probably the, the way you shouldn't play, but it felt good for me. And that's how I hit my forearm. So I started low, went all the way up, went down, and very important to hit the ball in front of you, so you see with your eyes where the ball are exactly. So I have control to see, to see exactly where I should hit the ball, plus to have your head down, not to keep your head up. It's very important to keep it down and look at the ball. So I did that and I finished very, very high up over the shoulders. Here, Borg demonstrates his forehand. Notice how his grip is tighter when he makes contact with the ball than it is when he's preparing to swing. Eastern grip and that was probably the only right grip I had in the beginning when I started to play tennis was on my backhand and but the thing is that I hit my backhand with two hands so I will explain now how I'm doing I have an Eastern grip I put my left hand right above the right just like this so I have a feel of the racket very important in my backhand, now you take your right foot in front of your left. Very important thing is that you take the racket way behind your body, very low. Not up here or not here. Especially with a two-handed backhand, it's very important when you start low, you have your racket way down. Because when the ball comes, you have to bend your knees and you, come, you have to come above the ball, right up. Because it's very difficult for the two-hander to start to, to hit up here. Because the ball is going to bounce very, very low or even high. But the thing is that you have to come under the ball. 
and that's more difficult for a two-hander. That's why you have to bend your knees, you have to have your racket very, very low to prepare yourself when the ball is coming. Say, if the ball already passes the net, then you're ready with the racket behind your back, very low, and you have to get down in your knees, because now you have to come under the ball. So you hit, and the same thing here, you have to hit in front of your shoulders, so you have contact with the eyes, and keep your head down, that's very important. And then the same thing with the forearm, I follow through, and I go up above my shoulders. <laughs> Watch how Borg places his feet. He's always thinking about his legs before his arms. The position of his feet is often the most important consideration in returning the ball. strokes. Usually when you start to learn something, you start to learn backer and forehand because those are the more easier one. Volley is a little bit more difficult. So you use a continental grip and with the thing with the volley is that it's very important to have a short swing. Like usually you start up here as long as you can see with the eye where you have the racket. Because if you take it a little bit more behind your shoulder, then you don't have any control. You don't see exactly where you're going to hit the ball. You might be too late, then you're going to miss hit. You don't have the time to hit the ball. So very important thing is you take up your racket here. You put your left foot in front of your right. And you just push the ball. You make a small push. So, very short swing, not too long. Because if you make a long swing, then you don't have time when the other guy is hitting the ball very hard. Because if you just block it with a short swing, then you have time to hit the ball. So very important, have the eye exactly where you see your racket. Make a short swing, very short. And the left foot in front of the right. It's 
exactly the same grip as the forearm volley. It's a continental grip. You do exactly the same things as you did at the forearm volley. But now you turn your right foot in front of your left foot. You take up your racket, exactly the same as the forearm volley. You should make contact with your eye so you see the shape of the racket. By that way, you have control where you're going to hit the ball. The same swing now, you make a short swing, you try to block the ball, make a very short swing. This thing you can have help a little bit of your left hand too. So when you hit the ball, you can take your left hand back. So by, by that way you can get more power in your backhand volley. A short swing, block the ball, the same thing as a forearm volley, not a long swing. Because if you make a long swing, you don't have time when the other guy hit the ball. But this way it doesn't matter how hard he hit the ball. Still you're going to have time to play the volley and make the volley. So a short swing from up here, you see the racket by your eye, not here, right up here. You make a short swing. Volleying did not come naturally to Borg, but with a lot of hard work, Borg has become an excellent volleyer. You have a continental grip. That's exactly when you shake someone's hand. You take just the rackets, called continental grip. The very important thing is the serve is where you put your feet to. I mean, all players, they have different movements where they're going to put the feet. Some, someone, they like to put it maybe like this, to stay with the side against the net. They have a lot of different uh, movements. But myself, I like to stay where my toes may be pointing against the net. Because the one reason is that when I toss up the ball, I have the ball here. When I toss it up, I want to have it exactly in front, straight up. In front of me and straight up because I don't want to toss up the ball to the left or to the right. Because if I do that, I have to bend my back or have to do a lot of things with my back who I shouldn't do. Because then I don't get the same power as I want to have. By the same time you throw up the ball, you take your racket behind your back, like this. So you have one motion. Then when the ball is up in the highest, then you reach and you're going to hit exactly where the ball is the, at the highest point. There where you meet the ball with the racket. So first motion is here, the ball up, and the ball is the highest point, then you reach for it up with the racket. And then you follow through. When you come down, you automatically put your right foot in front of your left and you follow through on your left side. Here again, the service is a skill that Borg perfected only after long hours of practice.
Notice the perfect timing that the Swedish players always seem to have when serving. The thing is with the smash is it's almost the same as, as the serve, but now you don't throw up the ball. You wait for the ball when the ball is coming. The thing is that usually you have the position that you have the left foot in front of the right. It depends where you are in the court. Sometimes if it's the easy one, you usually like this position, but sometimes you have to move over to the left side. It depends how difficult the lob is from the other opponent. But usually when you see the ball are coming, sometimes you can re point at the ball with your left hand to see exactly where they're coming. While you do that, usually you should have your rackets ready behind your back. Because if you, if you don't have the rackets ready, then you might be too late when the ball comes. Because it's exactly the same as when they smash, as they serve, that you should hit at the highest point with a smash too. Because if you're not ready with the racket, the ball might come down more quickly and then you maybe in the last second you have to hit it right above your head and then you hit it too late and then you're not going to make the smash. So be ready, you can point at the left hand when the ball are coming, be ready with your racket behind your back and hit the ball at the highest point and then with the same thing you follow through with your right, you come down with the racket on the left side. And that depends sometimes how difficult the smash is, because usually you might come down on the right hand, but as long as you hit it at the highest point, you come down, you come forward and follow through. <laughs> When Borg smashes, he may not always win a point, but he is sure to place the ball so that his opponent will have trouble returning it. Do you have a favorite shot or style? I prefer to, uh, to play from the backcourt because uh, I have more confidence in my ground stroke, like my backhand or forehand, because that's the way I started to play tennis, was from start from the backcourt and I learned in my ground stroke first. And the last thing was probably I was learning my volley, who I improved a lot for the last three, four years. So probably have the most confidence staying back, playing from the backcourt, and then after maybe a rally, when I see I have a good point to come in on, to make approach, then I come in and make the volley. But it's very important that I like to start from the backcourt and then to come in. There is no doubt that Borg is at his best when he's playing at the baseline, but it would be a mistake to label him as a defensive player. Let's just say that he does his best attacking from the back of the court. The top spin that Borg puts on his volleys gives the ball a long bounce, forcing the opponent back so that he is frequently out of position when Borg picks up the return and delivers a winning passing shot. If there is any doubt about Borg's ability to volley, one need only remember the 1978 final at Wimbledon, when Borg outlasted Jimmy Connors for the title. What advice do you have for young people aspiring to play tennis competitively? I think uh, the important thing is that uh, maybe when they started to play the first couple of years, they take it very, very easy. Not easy, they play a lot, but just for fun, maybe with friends or whatever, don't take it too serious. Because if you take it too serious in the beginning, then you might get 
tired or you might get fed up a little bit later. So very easy in the beginning, just enjoy yourself. You can play a lot, but just have fun. Then a little bit later, maybe they take it more serious and uh, they start to get maybe a coach or they start to play tournaments or whatever. And uh, another thing is that, uh, I mean, to improve yourself, the only thing is that to practice a lot, to spend a lot of time on the tennis court. Play as much as you can. And uh, I mean, that's probably the most important thing, that play, play and play and play. there is a scoring bonus level called game. You make game when you have scored a total of 100 or more points. Therefore, the game level is not the same for all suits or no trump. You've opened one no trump, partner bids two clubs, you bid two diamonds, and partner now rebids two spades. Bid two no trump. I hope you have enjoyed this course and have become slightly addicted to bridge. Remember now when friends say, do you